It was a secret weapon years ahead of its time. The first submarine ever to sink an enemy ship. Their stealth warfare in its purest form. The H.L. Hunley set out to save the Confederacy. But after her only victory, she vanished with her crew and lay hidden until the 21st century. This is a sealed time capsule. It's unlike any other type of shipwreck. Now, after 10 years of investigation, these scientists are about to solve this Civil War mystery. Oh, wow, this is fantastic. Using new forensic evidence, reconstructive modeling, and a ballistics laboratory, they may finally discover what happened to the Hunley and her crew. February 17th, 1864, Charleston, South Carolina. A special military unit is on a secret mission for the Confederacy. They volunteered to attack a Union warship with a new stealth weapon. It's a submarine. Some consider it the South's last hope. Others call it suicide. 13 crewmen have already drowned in earlier runs. This crew will meet a similar fate, never to return. But they will make history and launch a mystery that puzzles the world to this day. This is Clemson University's Warren Lash Conservation Center in Charleston, South Carolina. It's an advanced lab dedicated to studying and preserving the Confederate submarine Hunley and to unlocking its secrets. We're trying to retell the story of the event and we're looking at all the clues just like in a crime scene. There's no black box on the submarine, right? So you have to look at every feature you have available and, and make them speak. Since 2000, they've excavated 11 tons of material trapped within the sub, searching for evidence that might explain why the Hunley and her crew vanished more than a century ago. It's a unique time capsule as far as uh, shipwrecks go. We have the hull itself, we have the skeletal remains, we have the personal belongings that we need to determine, you know, not only who these men are, but what happened that night. Forensic analysis has already revealed chilling details of the crew's final moments. How did the crew end up just like this? These skeletal injuries are helping to identify the crew. And this cryptic shell surrounding the sub could be hiding scars from enemy fire that may have brought the Hunley down. Something has happened over there that is really dramatic. Until the Hunley was recovered, little was known about the vessel or its crew. Few details of its historic mission are confirmed. We know that eight men took the vessel roughly four miles out to sea to attack northern ships outside Charleston. The 40-foot submarine set its sights on a massive Union battleship, the USS Housatonic. It was more than five times the size of the Hunley, but the iron fish boat had a lethal sting, a 90-pound torpedo. The Union Navy was just about unbeatable. They had the best ships, they had the best guns. The way the thing they had to worry about was the South sneaking under them but they couldn't use their best weapons against the Hunley, and they couldn't see it. The Hunley was absolutely the fatal enemy to the Federal fleet. Their stealth warfare in its pure
purest form. By the time the sailors on the Housatonic spotted the Hunley, it was too late. All right, 100 yards, boys. Come on, man, hard, hard as you can. The sub was so close to the ship, they couldn't tip their cannons to fire on it. Desperate, they used their sidearms against the charging threat. After ramming its spar into the ship's hull, the Hunley pulled away, leaving its deadly charge behind. The explosion was devastating. Within minutes, the mighty Housatonic was on the bottom. Hunley changed the entire rules of the game. They made it a three-dimensional fight, and uh, nothing would ever be the same again. That event is the, the birth of modern submarine warfare. The Hunley was the first submarine ever to sink a ship in combat. But it was not the first underwater vessel. For centuries, inventors designed and built submarines with little success. During the American Revolution, the Turtle was a one-man sub designed to sink British ships around New York Harbor. By the Civil War, the North and the South were in a race to build the first combat submarine. Few believed the Confederacy would take the prize. They were having a tough time in the South. The blockade was cutting off everything. They had never been an industrial area of the country. They didn't build things, they grew things. This is one area in which they actually beat the North in an arms race. Horace Hunley, a wealthy Southerner, dreamed of building a torpedo boat that would save the Confederacy. In Mobile, Alabama, he teamed up with James McClintock, a skilled machinist and tinker. Their first vessel was built from parts of an iron boiler and showed promise. But the third model, named after Hunley himself, was built for success. You, know, you think of things built in maybe the Civil War and past time as being rudimentary, crude, you know, beaten out of iron, and here's this clunky machine that was thrown together, and, and that couldn't be further from the truth. These guys were artisans. The Hunley was a revolution and a vital weapon for the desperate Confederacy. By 1863, Charleston, South Carolina was under siege. A blockade of Yankee warships bombed the city daily and sealed its harbor. It was called Anaconda, President Lincoln's plan to choke the Confederacy, and it was working. The South did not have the ability to go out there and, and break that blockade but a stealth weapon could sail under the water and attack the federal ships, it meant the entire blockade could collapse and the port could open. In August 1863, Horace Hunley brought his secret weapon to Charleston. The city's commander, General Pierre Beauregard, wanted to strike at the blockade as soon as possible. A handsome reward was posted, $100,000 to sink the most powerful Yankee ships. It was an enormous sum. But the Hunley's mission was no small task and more dangerous than expected. On her last night, history was made and the mystery was born. Almost like a fable, since nobody had found the Hunley, no one had seen it. It's been passed on through generation to generation of this event that took place. So this is an object or a chance to find something that's tied passionately to the community and passionately to a society. The Hunley lay hidden four miles off the coast of Charleston 
for more than a century. Then, in 2000, the famous sub was finally recovered. Archaeologists noticed breaches in the sub's hull. They discovered two large holes on the starboard side. The most dramatic hull breach was in the stern. This one is the largest. It's on the starboard side of the aft ballast tank. And as you can see, it's substantial. It's uh, three foot long and about uh, two feet wide. It's very tempting to assume that we're looking at the reason why the sub sank. Perhaps the Hunley was too close to the Housatonic when the torpedo exploded. Debris from the Union ship may have ripped these holes in the Confederate sub. But the Hunley team claims that these large breaches occurred long after the sub sank. And they've got the evidence to prove it. The clues were hiding in tons of sediment that was packed inside the sub. The cone of sediment is located right here under the conning tower. Scott Harris, the team's geologist, took samples and x-rayed them. The images show how the layers of sediment inside the sub changed over time, like the rings of a tree. The initial sedimentation was this really, really fine-grained, dark mud. Right after the Hunley sank, only the finest silt entered the sub and settled on the bottom. But years later, a drastic change occurred larger sediment began pouring into the vessel. Above the fine grain materials, we do see a break in the sedimentation where we go from this fine grained to very coarse grained. If the Hunley had suffered a gash this big the night it sank, the large sediment would have settled on the sub's bottom from the beginning. There's no conceivable way that you wouldn't have materials from the outside ending up inside the ballast tank area. We have no intrusive material. Uh, we're just looking at mud, which tells us that uh, the submarine, when it went down, the aft ballast tank was intact. The torpedo explosion didn't cause the massive hole. The damage occurred much later, perhaps from other ships in the decades that followed. Something got hooked on the submarine. If somebody drug an anchor across, it could very easily hit the side of the, of the submarine here and cause some massive damage. So if the vessel survived the attack, what about the crew? This 3D reconstruction reveals shocking evidence about their final moments. The Confederate submarine H.L. Hunley was recovered from the sea in 2000. Today, the archaeologists are investigating the sub's corroded shell to learn more about why the vessel sank. They have to drain 75,000 gallons of fresh water from its tank. This puts the Hunley at risk. Oxygen will corrode the exposed metal, so time is limited. The Hunley's corroded shell is called concretion. It may be hiding key clues about what happened the night she vanished. It's also a record of everything that touched or affected the submarine after she sank, like a fingerprint from a crime scene. Right now, they're focusing on the Hunley's forward conning tower. The forward conning tower is above the area where the commander piloted the vessel. It's also a key focal point in the investigation. This damage may have caused the sub to sink. Capturing a detailed record is critical. This light scanner records the topographic information of the tower with lasers. OK, scan complete. Lights on. That looks pretty good to me. Each scan joins another, like a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. What do you think about the color? I think the color looks OK, but once the alignment's finished, 
will definitely know a lot more.